Live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri, he is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable KSM. Excited. You know, I've started a new trend. Uh, well, from last week, I've decided that actually at my age, I mean, come on, man. Since this is, eh, many of us are. Since this is quite December, is changing. I'll be mean, since the seventh December. Show me some love, man. Yeah. Hey! Yeah. It was end. Every single second was end. But you know, I've started a trend now. I say, where I've gotten to now, I want to talk to young guests. You know, my guests that were like kids when I was doing this show. So I started with my director last week. I think she was like eight years, Miss Ati Shun, you know, and she's now the director of the show. And today I'm moving on to the next level. This gentleman I'm going to talk to, to when I started, I'm sure oh, was eight, nine days somewhere. But today, this is a very, very, very accomplished blogger, traveler, and he, he's changing the narrative. I'll introduce him soon, but let, give me a few minutes, you know. You know how the focus on Africa is always about the lowest common denominator? You see white people here with fine cameras, they walk past Shasako, they walk past all the great things, but let them see some man squatting somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do for. <laughs> there is some man peeing somewhere outside, then they film it. And then they tell you these are scenes from Accra, you know. Always on the lowest common denominator. Now, enough. The reason I am so excited about my next guest is that he is trying to change the African narrative. Show some love, man. <laughs> he is trying to focus on the positives that we have plenty in Africa. So even though this man went to school, he studied aeronautic engineering, and he was an aviation expert, he had decided to obey YouTube and change the narrative. <laughs> Show some love, man. <laughs> Now, finally, you're going to ask, oh, KSM, who are you talking about, folks? I'm talking about no other than the world's greatest blogger. At one point, I think he had over 2 million followers on YouTube. They hacked his account. I talked to him when he comes here. But let me shut up now. Ladies and gentlemen, show some love, as you've never been done before, for my son. What am I? <laughs> Hey, hey. Okay. How you doing, That's the best intro ever. <laughs> Please have a seat here. Thank you. Have a seat Thank here, you. man. Wow. Can't believe I'm sitting down with a living legend. Anyway. <laughs> can I, I sit without paying anything? <laughs> <laughs> this is your chair. Okay. Chair, man. Thank you. Show some love. He's in the house. Yeah. We're taking a commercial break, and when we come back, yeesh, the show will begin. Stick around. We'll be right back. KSM Show. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek. Your soul will thank you. You are always welcome. Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. Zipa Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up a Zipa Essentials jacket at Ruler Unisys Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Takofo Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544-548766. Paul's Fitness Center, the premier destination for fitness in Ghana.
Meet the indefatigable captain. There are three things that I love doing. Number one, work out. Number two, work out. Number three, work out. Work out, put mind, soul, and body together. The captain has spoken. Getting busy. Bright lights, yeah, they make me dizzy. Logo Liggy. I just want the Lizzy. It's a Logo Liggy. Uptown, chasing for the Lizzy. Downtown, everybody busy. Logo Liggy. Life be Logo Liggy. I just want the pain. Paul's Fitness Center. Yeah. East Ligon Branch, Lizzie Sports Complex, I Cotton really Street, East Ligon, Accra, Ghana, 0302-519-675, Kumasi Branches, Officers Mess Branch, Denyame, Major Corbina Drive, Kumasi, 0541-871-602, Golden Tulip, Kumasi City Branch, Rain Tree Street, 0322-492-647, Pulse, the premier destination for fitness in Ghana. Say what lie we for on town. The KSM show. We're back. We're back. Thank you. What am I? KSM. I've been looking for you. No, I, I know, right? But that energy. Wow. The energy. <laughs> <laughs> The, 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 the trick of my energy is that mm. I hang out with Nkwala Nkwala Nkwala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> they give me the energy. Oh, you wow. guys, you know, look at you. The energy you give to people, but what you have done so well. Let me, let me say, he is the most famous African YouTuber yeah. you can ever think of. I really want to limit by saying African YouTuber. He's one of the most famous YouTubers in the world, period. Uh. <laughs> And at one point you have over two million and then yeah. what, they hacked your account? Yeah, my account was hacked. I went to Germany, I came back and the channel was hacked. Wow. Yeah, and um, I had to just go through, because I, I work with YouTube too, so <laughs> it was a bit fast. I spoke to them and they decided to work it behind the scene within two days. Yeah, you were back. back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <They know it>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that was scary. It must have been. Yeah, very. Because that's your life, that's, that's you. Yeah, exactly. That's the power that I have. And it, it was gone. Uh, just a twinkle of an eye. And I'm like, you know what? We have to get his back. So and he, you were very brave about it, though. You know, you were very... No, no. I was more quiet. Because, like, um, when the thing was happening, I saw it. Mm, so I called mm. YouTube. This is what's going on. And they were like, okay, everything is locked behind the scene. So just allow us to take care of it. So mm -hmm. when the bloggers were just all over the place, I was just... Uh, chilled because yeah, YouTube has showed me everything is okay. So within two days, you're getting, back. Yeah, and you're strong, man. Yeah, and <laughs> even getting bigger and bigger. You know, so it is what it is. It's fantastic. Yeah, but you have an amazing story, man. You know, like I was introducing, you, I say you are one of the world's leading YouTubers. <laughs> Interesting enough, you mm. said it, aeronautical engineering, engineering in China. In China, yeah. So I went so right about now you're supposed to be. Teaching some Chinese language at uh, <laughs> some free SHS or something. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, I still speak the language. I still got it. Uh, yeah. Um, I did aviation engineering, but I felt like um, the passion that I have, people needed to hear what I love doing, you know, instead of just being an engineer. Because I, I did engineering for my dad, by the way. Oh, um, he wanted you to be an engineer. And my dad wanted because I have a doctor in the family. Okay. So they needed an engineer. So I <laughs> had to be the engineer of the family. I see. So I chose aviation because I love planes. But at the end of the day, I did all the research after school mm. and I realized that which one will pay me more? Mm. I mean, YouTube or engineering? So I had to take the one that pays more. Really? Yeah. And I'm sure, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there are people thinking, eh, yeah. YouTube pays more than engineering. Trust me, there are many people who are getting that awakening. I think uh, people called me crazy. Even when I came to Ghana, people called me jobless. This guy they say so you were jobless. Oh, yeah, yeah. Even to today, people call me jobless. And you, you make like what? How many thousand cities uh, a month? Thousands of dollars. Dollars. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you, you see his reaction? You see thousands of cities. Thousands of <laughs> Have a hundred thousands of dollars. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Okay, so like when it comes to YouTube, uh, where I sit right now, we go for twenty to fifty thousand dollars every month. 
every yeah, month. Every month, yeah. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and people think you are jobless. Oh, yeah, I mean, I love it that way. I mean, I want to be jobless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call me jobless, and it's okay. Yeah. But I try, when I get the chance, I try to encourage the young people. Whatever passion that you have, you have to monetize it and uh, make the best out of it. That's it. No, let's, let's walk me through it. Because okay. here you were an aeronautic student. Yeah. And uh, even if you discovered a passion that you had for YouTube, yeah. What, what's your film background? What's the camera background? What's the creative content background that drew you to that? I have no qualification when it comes to cameras to today. Mm -hmm. I don't have, all I know, I don't know, your camera guys can tell you auto, auto focus. That's all I knew those days. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all I knew. So basically, um, I was in China. I, I studied in China mm -hmm. and um, living in Ghana, I was born in a village, uh, Ahinko Fikrom in Takrade, Western region, I never had 24-7 internet. So you didn't have 24-7 No, 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 I mean the internet, you have to go to internet cafe. The time that I was applying for a scholarship to study abroad, that's when you go to internet cafe, yes. you pay one city, one hour, then you're good to go. Yeah. So when I went to China, my room has 24-7 internet. Mm. When I go to the field to even play football, the There's football internet. pitch got internet. Everywhere, our libraries got internet everywhere. The internet was just yeah. around us. So I started doing research. With the internet that I have, what can I do with it? Apart from being an engineer. Mm. That's when, um, a big shout out to, there's a guy who used to, I forget the name now, Boga GH, thank you. Um, he used to dance on YouTube. I mean, dance okay. on YouTube. So I started watching all these guys. So I created a, an account just to comment on the guys videos mm. so during my research i found that you can actually make money on youtube and i was like yo i have an account already so why don't we start creating videos mm. that's it mm. so mm. i started as a comedian yeah yeah oh you're doing comedy yeah i was more like dkb those days <laughs> 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 i was like uh, a comedian um, doing skits then my dad found out that this boy is supposed to be an engineer but and he's there there doing skits doing skits so my dad never spoke to me for two weeks he was so mad, extremely mad. I wanted to be an engineer and nothing else. So I spoke to my mom, convinced my mom that I have a passion for this. Though it's not paying me, but I feel like it got a future. I explained to my mom, my mom was like, you know what, I'm gonna take care of your dad for you. Two weeks later, my dad picked up a phone and called me. So that is why the name Wadamaya came into existence. So my channel name used to be my real name. Yeah. So my real name, hey. It's in a box, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I'm called Bertolt Winkler. Uh, Bertolt Winkler. Winkler, but um, in German they say Winkler instead of ah, Winkler. Winkler. Yeah, so that's, that's the German name that I have. Uh, my dad's colleague at work. So that was the name for my YouTube channel. So when my daddy agreed for me to do what I'm doing, I was like, you know what, thanks to my mom. So when I was living in China, when you say what am I, I am I. What am I means my mom, I am Maya means oh my god. The Chinese okay. people get super excited to the extent that you can actually buy food for free. Because you're not speaking their language, you're actually speaking a local dialect. Mm. So that was the trick. So everywhere I go, because I was learning Chinese that time, so I would be like, what am I? I am Maya. And uh, yeah, everybody just started calling me what am I? And then I switched it to my channel name as what am I? Meaning my mom. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's where it all started. And then my dad called me to come back home to Ghana. When my dad called me to come back to Ghana, I came. He sat me down and said, you speak the language. I don't want my son to be on the internet with no value. Whatever you did on the internet needs to carry some value. Some value. Yeah. Dad, what kind of value do you think I can bring on board? And he told me, you speak Chinese. Mm. The Chinese people that have uh, misconception about Africa, mm. why don't you use your Chinese that you speak to mm. change that misconception? When I did my first ever video about that, it went viral. Wow. Because a lot of people living in China could relate to that video. So and what was in the content? that? So the content was more of, um, there's a video that I have where Chinese people were asking me, is being an African like poor, like is Africa poor, you don't have anything, why are you wearing shoes in China? You know, just clearing, the lady the asks me questions, I respond to her in the correct way. So more like educating, conversation, 
And then everybody started sharing that video, and that's how uh, Wadamaya became who wow. he is right now. So I came back home again. My father told me to do a story on Galamse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was actually the f one of the first guys who did a video about Galamse in Ghana. So today, BBC, CNN, everybody is using that footage. Recently, Anas Exposé, yeah. he used my video. I did it in 2017 when my dad asked me to go and do that because my dad, we are from Takradi, so our water bodies were destroyed. So my dad was like, go and, you know, talk about this, that our water, people are destroying our water bodies because of illegal mining. So I went to uh, Asan Krogwa, did that story, posted it on YouTube, and guess what? They started arresting, 2017, I think, was it Mahama or Ananado? They started arresting people, and my dad called me and said, what you did, they're arresting people, please hide. <laughs> 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 please hide. So, yeah, so at the end of the day, I got my father's blessings, and believe me or not, uh, my life has never been the same. I'm very curious. Yeah. We're, we're going to continue. Yeah. Uh, who is your father? He seems to have uh, some, it, should I say, rebel mode kind of thinking. Yeah. What? My father was a big fan of you. It's rather unfortunate that he's no longer alive, but he loved your shows, and... Um, He's a big fan of seeing changes in, uh, mm. on the continent. Mm. He's a big fan of um, education. I'm a pastor's son, by the way. And, uh, you know, a pastor's son, the pastor who loved politics kind of guy. Yeah. So that guy was a politician, by the way. But he never got the chance to. to yeah. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, I think every, I'm going to say this on your show, every leader in this country got a chance to meet my dad. But they don't, they don't know that I'm the son. Oh, really? But he's, He's no longer alive, but one day, I'm not going to say this, but one day, I'll sit down with all of them and I'll tell them who my dad is. Every leader from Atamos, let's mention, to the current president. All of them met my dad, but they don't know I'm the that son the, of... You're the son. No, 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 no. President Kufo, all of them. I'm just saying this on your show, but um, with time, they'll get to know. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> with time. Wow. With time. Wow. He, he, wow. He, he passed on in 2017, mm, but mm. I know his legacy still continues. He does. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> legacy continues. Yes. <laughs> the legacy continues. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And his name was. Oh, no, no, no. oh when, when no, no, you mentioned his name? I mentioned, I mentioned. So, um, Charles Kofi Hayford. Um, Charles Kofi Hayford. Just do research about him. He, he, you can't see his uh, pictures on. I don't know. Maybe pictures online, but. Yeah, that, that's my dad, Takradi. Wow. Yeah, all of them. Some of them even came to our house. But anyway, wow. yeah. Trust me, if there's a picture online, it's going to come out. No, there's a picture online. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a picture online. You see it. Yeah. Oh, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Mm. And, and your mom? My mom is still alive. Your mom is alive. My mom is still alive. She still lives in Takradi. Mm. She's living her best life now. Mm. Yeah. You bought her a car recently? Yeah, I bought her a car. It, it was a contract, by the way. The contract? What contract did you sign? So being an engineer, when I wanted to, when I had the passion mm -hmm. to promote Africa in a positive light, I told my mom that I'm coming back home. But at the end of the day, I'm the guy who brings money to the family, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So coming back here, my mom was like, please don't do this. Don't come. Please don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing here. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, I convinced my mom, but still, she never bought ideas. So I packed my things and I came to Ghana. What made you so confident about coming to Ghana? I did all my research, like in terms of how can I depend on the internet? How can I make it on the internet? I did all my research, but also there was something boiling in me in terms of like, I want to make a change, you know? Mm. I, I really want, because even if you're living in China, yeah? I was living in China, I was making videos about China, students were coming to China because of my videos. Mm. And I'm like, I'm not even recognizing the country mm. that it's not mine. But I know that I can make more impacts when I do this in from, Ghana, from, yeah. from where I'm from. So that's when I came back, designed a project called Africa to the World, promoting Africa in a positive light. And I came back here, I started in Ghana. Ghanaians never accepted me, by the way. Um, so I decided to leave. 
Oh, so you came, I came and to Ghana. left. Oh, yeah, I came to Ghana. And, and what did your mother say then? Because your mother was telling my, you my mom, no point my coming. Mom, my mom literally cried, yeah? So talking about the contract, I signed a contract with my mom that I can actually make it big with this. So let's say one year, give me a year. If I don't buy you a car, I'm going to go back to China. So I showed my mom a long-term visa. I had one-year visa. In case of anything, this is the visa that I have. I can always go back. I'll go back. But less than a year, this is your car. And I asked her, do you still want me to go back to China? <laughs> he said, okay, you can do whatever you want to do now. So I think it, it, it's been great. Wow. It's been really wow. great. Show some love, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let me get back on this yeah. uh, research that you're doing on the internet. Yeah. Because you have proved yeah. that the internet pays. Exactly. I mean, you're making what? twenty-four to $40,000? Exactly. Every month? Yeah. And this is only, I'm talking about accents. I'm talking about money from just views, right? Mm. But um, YouTube has opened a lot of doors for me. I, I literally know everyone on the continent. The networking, because your network is your network. Yes. So, and apart from even the YouTube views only, before I sit down with an entrepreneur, if you're a real estate developer, you know, you have to bring some cash and then yes, uh, invite me. Yeah. Uh, there are brands that they want to you give them a shout out. They have to give you money to do that. Um, flights, hotels, it, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. And I built everything from the internet, mm. started my own business from the internet. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to tell the youth of Africa that the internet is a powerful tool, but you have to use it wisely. Mm. You know, we turned up insulting our leaders on the internet. We turned up just buy one Ghana city and start insulting the elderly people that we came to meet that we need to respect, mm. you know. Mm. Um, I, I was telling people that did they even know that Facebook pays. Like, YouTube is not the only platform paying me. Yeah. Facebook pays me. So at the end of the day, you need to do things that brings you money, but not things that actually can, in 10 years' time, yeah. it will come, come against you, come exactly. to haunt you. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, there are so many ways to make money online. So many ways. I think um, at some point, people thought I was occultic. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? I, I think I met one guy in town, mm. and he's like, oh, you bought a car for your mom, you're living in your own house, look at the car you're using, young man, um, I want you to mentor me. So I thought he came with the right intention. Then he tested me and like, which kind of awkward group are oh, you in? Let wow. me just, um, and I thought he was the only one. And I, I met people, I Ooh, mean, in town, in I, that, meet, yeah. I meet people in town asking me like, which occultic group that I've joined, they want to join to and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any occultic group anywhere. Um, some even think that you just scammer. You know, the internet for one night, you're just covering up with YouTube. But believe me, the internet is everything for me. It's a gold mine. It's a gold, gold mine. mine. Yeah. Thank you. It's yeah. a gold mine. That's why, like, people like you, you know, sometimes like, you need to come to young people like us for us to show you the way now. <laughs> 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 you remind me of... Uh, <laughs> So you're so far, but uh, yeah, exactly. Hey, when we have some uh, uh, so former song that we used to sing back in the day, yeah. show me the way, <laughs> show me the way. I wanna go to heaven. Yeah, show, show me, me the, the way. way. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> this one, show me the way. <laughs> <laughs> no. Folks, we're taking a commercial break. Uh, when we come back, uh, we are in the house with Wadi Maya, yeah. and there's more to come. Stick around. We'll be right back. KSM Show. Cactus Creek. It is no longer Ghana's best kept secret. It's an open secret. So serene, so heavenly. And the meals? Mm, mm, mm. Just like home cooking. Cactus Creek. Your soul will thank you. You are always welcome. Home. Call our WhatsApp 055 039 5007. As 
Zipa Essentials has good news for you. If you're in Takradi and its environs, don't worry. You can pick up a Zipa Essentials jacket at Ruler Unisex Boutique in Anaji, Takradi, Queen of Peace in Takofo Road. Call or WhatsApp 0544 548766. Paul's Fitness Center, the premier destination for fitness in Ghana. Meet the indefatigable captain. There are three things that I love doing. Number one, workout. Number two, workout. Number three, workout. Workout put mind, soul, and body together. The captain has spoken. Bright lights, yeah, they make me dizzy, logo liggy. I just want the lizzy. Logo Liggy, uptown chasing for the Lizzy. Downtown, everybody busy. Logo Liggy, like me, Logo Liggy. I just want the Paul's Fitness Center, yeah. East Ligon Branch, Lizzy Sports Complex, really Cotton Street, East Ligon, Accra, Ghana, 0302 519675. Kumasi Branches, Officers oh. Mess Branch, Denyame, Major Corbina Drive, Kumasi, 0541 871 602. Golden Tulip, Kumasi City Branch, Rain Tree Street, 0322 492 647. Pulse, the premier destination for fitness in Ghana. Say what lie we for around town. The KSM Show. We're back, we're back, we're back. And I have a Berthold Winkler. Yeah. <laughs> Berthold Winkler, yeah. AKA Wadimaya. Give him some love, man. Good love. You know what? I mean, what you have done is groundbreaking. Mm. Um, before I even get deeper into that, how does it feel? Because uh, you are, you always say that you were a villager. Yeah, exactly. You grew up in the village, yeah. like you said here. Now, in the crown movie. Yeah. And now look, you are practically an internet, should I say millionaire or thousandaire or and getting uh, there? Thousand, thousand, thousands, thousands. Yeah. Thousand. <laughs> How does it feel, man, to be you? I love being me and um, we still got a long way to go and that's what I always look forward to. Um, I don't let um, what I have right now get into me. Mm. Um, that's why I always say authenticity sells a lot. Mm. Be whoever you are. I can wear a singlet today and shoot. I'll be wearing my slippers and be shooting. For me, it's all about the value I bring on the table. Mm. And that's it. Mm. And feel proud? Not yet, but maybe soon I will say I feel proud of what I've <laughs> done. <laughs> <But for> now, <laughs> this is, I love being me. I love being me. Yeah. 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 That, like, that, is, that is it. Um, and before I even start my videos, I'll tell you guys, I am the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. So before you judge me, <laughs> know that I've judged myself already. I'm annoying, <laughs> so you don't need to tell me. And you call yourself an annoying village boy from Ghana? From Ghana. What's, what's your village experience? How long were you in the village? All my life, until I went to China. Really? Yeah, and fried rice was luxury, man. <laughs> yeah, so to today, I still love fried rice. Like, everywhere I go, you guys have fried rice here? Yeah, we ah, yeah. I'll, I'll give, get you fried give rice. Give me some fried Cut rice, man. Fried <laughs> rice. <laughs> 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 you know, you used, wow. to, used to eat fried rice during uh, maybe when your mom goes to Funra and come yeah. back. Yeah, fried because rice. of friend. <laughs> yeah, then you get fried rice to eat. Um, kako became my favorite meal. I, I say it on camera every day. I know if you don't know, you know Kako. I know Kako. Um, so we used to. Uh, we do have a lot in common, uh, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> my, my, we, we had a cassava farm, so we eat fufu a lot. But don't forget that. There's no meat, there's no fish and stuff. So my mom would buy kako, you kako. know. With kako, you can swallow like a lot of um, yeah. fufu balls and stuff. So wow. at the end of the day, kako became my favorite. So today, I can't live without kako. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, I, I remember I, I sent my PA to go and buy me some stuff. And then she came and she bought kako. 
I look at it and I laugh. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, she, she knows me now. Like, she knows, yeah. That, like, Kako is everything. Is yeah. there like a Kako association or something? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 do you want to join? Once you endorse them, <laughs> once you endorse them, they... Yeah. Everybody will be thinking Kako in no, Ghana, so... Ka Ka <laughs> Kako is a legendary um, yeah. meet. I think yeah. he saved a lot of lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love Kako. Yeah. So, so yeah. that kingdom come. That yeah. <laughs> Kako till that kingdom come. Ah, Kako till that kingdom come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, village life, um, I always say... Um, I love my mom so much and mm. I want to make sure she's okay and mm. because she sacrificed a lot for us mm. and um, what my kinds of things see one of the stories that I told about my mom during Christmas you know we used to struggle to eat my mom used to sell kenke a big shout out to my senior brothers they used to sell kenke I didn't do a lot of stuff but they struggled a lot they sell kenke in the morning before they go to school um, some of them, they even have to miss class just to sell kinky. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, I didn't do that. I did in the evening ones, but a little bit. But at the end of the day, my mom used to buy stuff on credit. And there was this day, you know, we're eating in a big bowl. We're all excited. Finally, we have some chicken, and there was still cacao, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, this woman that my mom was owing, um, uh, I think she went to buy maize or corn from the woman, and the woman came and said, oh, so you guys have money and you are eating fufu. The woman just pick up the bowl and just throw. And she we used to eat whole together. Thing. You know, like the whole family. I don't know. We're eating. 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 I don't know. do not Shed tears. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she has suffered to the center. Right now, my mom has an eye problem because I didn't, she was just doing everything to make sure we're okay. And um, um, there's some, d we slept with that electricity for one complete year when my dad lost his job. We've, we've suffered. It's a, it's a family that I've really suffered. But thank God, um, wow. God has been grateful. So look at you now. I don't forget where I'm coming from. Yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. always like I always tell people if you know where you were going, you must remember where you're where coming from. Where you're coming from. from. That's very important. So that's always in mind. That's very important. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So what 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 led you go to China? What what was the sequence of events that you ended up in China? So I applied a scholarship to study in the UK. I got to school, University of Greenwich, to study mechanical engineering. And at the end of the day, um, I was supposed to go and apply for the visa, but they wanted a bank statement. It was a half scholarship. What shows that when you go, you can pay, you can pay the, the remaining. Balance, yeah. My father never had a bank account. He had a rural bank. Uh, so I went, visa got denied. And I've already told all my friends that, hey, me, I'm not going to school in Ghana. Uh, I, I, I think I left out of desperation. Um, I told all of them, I'm going abroad, whether you like it or not. Now, visa refused. What do I do? I had to mm. find another way. Mm. And that's when China came into existence. Mm. And when China came, I was not the one who applied. I have an uncle who checked my grades and said, I'm going to support you, but only your flight ticket. Mm. So I... That's all the support I can give. I can give you. So, the, like, I went to China with a flight ticket. I went to school without paying school fees. I stayed in China for three months. I was supposed to start my course in September, I ended mm -hmm. up starting in January. Mm. Because I had no money for school fees, mm. but I had flight tickets. So I got my visa. Um, my father was like, okay, you have the visa, but you're not going anywhere. December, I was like, you know what? My visa is spiced in January. I Whether this man likes it or not, I have to leave this place. So I spoke to someone, the uncle, same uncle, bought my ticket, went to China, never had uh, money at the end of the day. I was just there. Three months later. Tell me about the three months. Being there, you don't speak the nothing. language. You don't. What What was your daily routine like? Going through life, you don't. I, that's actually how I learned the language. Mm. So when I went, I was more like a baby. I, I don't know if you know that I have a new an, another name called Ghana Baby. Yeah, I, I know. So you said that, yeah. yeah that's that was, where the name came from. Okay. So I went to China. Everybody looks at me and they're like, Ah, this guy is a baby. <laughs> you know, to the extent I was detained at the um, Dubai airport. 
because they were like, where's your mom and dad? This guy, really? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy is so young to travel alone. So at the end of the oh, day, they wow. checked my age, 18 years old. Hey, okay, cool. Hey, then this is a baby face guy. So at the end of the day, they allowed me to go to China. I went to China. Guess what? The guy, the, we ha we're living in a dormitory. The woman that comes to clean our dormitory, I was so young. These guys felt like that's our son. So they come, they start talking to me. I don't understand. I was like, I need to speak to this woman. So I go and check on the internet how to say hello. Ni hao. Then I go out and go and say ni hao. And they say ni hao. They continue. I don't know what else <laughs> to say. So I just started using the internet to learn the language. And these women were like, we have a washing machine in school. But they loved me so much. They wanted to talk to me. They started washing my clothes with their hands. These are Chinese women. And during that they started talking to me. I go, learn. And I was not schooling. So three months later, when I started my course, we had like two days Chinese courses within. And then I learned that. upgraded my Chinese. Three months later, I won my first award in Chinese. Wow. <laughs> three wow. months later, wow. I, I have to give you the picture where I received my first ever award. And I never learned that in classroom. I learned that from the women. And with that, that, I think, gave me a lot of leverage living in China. I've, I've been hustling for quite a long time. Wow. Um, I yeah. was once, because of the Chinese, I was once a lecturer in my own university. Um, that's how I managed to pay my school fees. You're a lecturer. What were you teaching? I, I, did, I did calculus. I'm a very good mathematician, by the way. So um, we have a student. You're an overall smart guy, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, very, very. If you just say so yourself. Yeah, very. I mean, that one, I need to be proud about that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I like that. I, I like that. that. I got that from my dad. And uh, a big shout out to Mr. Joseph Kita from Bumper Senior High School. I, I, didn't, I didn't like my senior high school, by the way. But this man told me that it doesn't matter the school you are in. It's about you. So he mentored me. So I became a very good mathematician. Um, I had A's in uh, both my core wow. and elective math. So mm -hmm. when I went to China, I was more like ahead because of that man. Wow. Um, so I got there. I mean, the Chinese student that wants to be pilots, so they have to learn calculus in English. There comes Maya. Then I started doing that. So you were teaching calculus in English? Calculus in English because Chinese people learn in Chinese. They do, they do everything in Chinese So because they will be going to the UK, the USA yeah. to yeah. learn, so they ha need to have that basic. So I was there just to give them that basics, and they pay me good money, and I was using the same money to pay my school fees. And there's another thing that I did in China that really helped me a lot. Um, you see, when you take students from Africa to China, whatever, they have to give you 5% of their school fees. This is something that a lot of people didn't know. So I was friends with all the lecturers, all the administration, and they taught me, you can actually do this. Okay, who do I bring to China? There's a guy on YouTube called Phil Tommy. You guys should go check him out. He's more like my boy now. Um, I, I took him to China. There's so many guys. I took them. So they have school fees. Every year when they pay their school fees, you have I get my commission. <laughs> 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 I get my commission. Wow. Um, at some point, I was selling hamburgers. We you sold know, hamburgers I sold in hamburgers China. in China where it was funny, by the way. So in China, they don't even like made in China stuff. They don't like it in China. No, no, no. They don't like made in China stuff. So we're saying that the That's beggars are the yeah? beggars are from Germany. So uh, they go hambao, like German hamburger. And I guess there was a, a Chinese lady who um, have been to Germany before. She speak German. This yeah. lady came and started speaking German. They thought we were Germans selling German beggars. Yeah. At the end of the day, we don't understand anything. <laughs> 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 we just switched to Chinese and all of that. Uh, we did a lot, and so we also used to teach uh, Chinese kids. Uh, basic English. That's one of the things that also pays mm. a lot in China. So I did quite a lot of wow. things. I went to China without my dad paying my school fees. I took care of myself. So through all the jobs you're doing, the, through I did everything by myself. So the, I've hustled for a long time. So I know how to use money wisely. Yeah, that's it. Wow, <laughs> that's really incredible. Yeah. Really incredible. Was there anything that you would call that your toughest moment in China as a Ghanaian? Or everything moment. was under control? You know, living in a country where sometimes you're not welcome, that actually triggered who I am today. I had 
So I wanted to learn from Chinese people. So all my friends were Chinese. Mm. But at some point, they will make you feel like you are not from here. Mm. You, no matter how good you are with them, you speak like you their don't language, belong. you don't belong here. You can make all the money in the country, but you don't belong, but you don't belong here. That was when I felt like it's time to go back home. Yeah, my professors loved me. Everybody loved me. I mean, when I come to you and I speak the language, but at the end of the day, you feel like you don't belong here. I mean, um, you sit in a bar sometimes. Nobody want to sit next to you. And you'll be like, what have I done? You'll be walking and people will be touching your skin. They rub your skin. To and see say, it oh, you're going to see some deaths. That's why you're black. You know, I, I remember I had went, a... Went through all of that. Yeah. People were actually yeah, yeah, feeling had, you, yeah? I had a Chinese girlfriend where, like, we go out when you buy chocolate. She asked me, please don't buy black chocolate. Buy the white one, okay? Because <laughs> she's scared I'm going to lose my fingers. Because the chocolate looks like me. So you probably... <laughs> <laughs> really? See, really? No, it, it's crazy. Like, I, I don't know if it's ignorant. I, I remember, like, we're looking for a friend. He lives here, so we knocked the wrong door. We went, there was a lady. Oh, hi, blah, blah, blah. We spoke to her and said, oh, no, the guy lives the next, next door. door. When we went to my friend's room, the lady came to knock. Please, did you guys give me HIV? <laughs> yep. Like, I think Richard is watching this video. He definitely knows that uh, what I'm saying is not. Wow. So it's more like ignorant. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, because China is more like a bit censored. So whatever yeah, they feed them is yeah. what they see online. Uh, what they see, what the uh, Chinese government gives them. So these are the things that made me feel like um, I don't belong here and I have to go back home. And no matter what, I think I need to go back I home. I read about the video you did on the bus yeah. showing all the empty seats. I, yeah. I, was, I, was, I was sitting and there's empty seats, but everyone is standing because they don't want to oh, sit. Oh, you were sitting. I was, so but as, you soon, as, I, as soon as I got there, everybody stood up uh, because that's a black man. Probably nobody wants to sit by nobody you. didn't want to sit next to you. So like I, I everybody started like they start, they went and stand and I used my phone and I started recording. And it, it's it's like that. Even in subways, trains, nobody wanna sit next to you. I mean the people that will sit next to you are open minded people, mm. but the rest I, I mean if a black man carrying people will start running. Sometimes people will come and um, well like come to you. Uh, touch your hair, you know, that kind of vibe and all of that. But for me, it was a learning curve for me. And I think um, living in China played a major role in who I am today. Mm -hmm. In terms of how I speak now, is because I learned a lot in China. Um, I think I always tell people, traveling is not a bad thing. Traveling is for you to go and learn, mm -hmm. get exposed, mm -hmm. learn a skill, come back home, find a problem, solve, solve it, it, and become a millionaire. Wow. And, well, well, um, uh, unfortunately, for today, our time is up, but I'm not letting you go. Ah. We have to do part two. Definitely. So, yeah, ah. so, stay right there. <laughs> okay. Folks, I have to end it here and sign off, but trust me, <laughs> next week we are back to finish this conversation. So until we come back next week, KSM signing off, as I always do, in the same words I've used since Wodemaya was two years old. <laughs> what are the words? I am out of, let the whole world say, yeah. yeah. <laughs>